And I know where the killer gets his suits. No kidding. Hey, I'm impressed. You are? Well, it wasn't easy. Luke, why don't you come here to my apartment later this afternoon? Uh, fine. Where do you live? 361 Rue Jarry. Okay, I'll come over. I was used to working alone, but I had to admit it felt good with George on the case too. But there were some things I was going to have to do alone, and fast. I needed the answers to some questions. Who was the costume killer? And why did he murder Carchon? Why did Carchon ask for me to interview him? How did he know my father? And why was my editor so scared? There was some kind of secret war going on out there. But who was on which side? One thing I did know. I wasn't going to get the answer sitting at my desk. The photograph showed Carchon smiling happily to camera, with a background of burning huts and death. My old table had seen better days. I was beginning to know how it felt. There wasn't anyone that I needed to call. I was beginning to hate the phone. All it brought me was bad news. You have no messages. No messages for me. It was a photograph of my father, the first one I ever took, with the first camera he ever bought me. The box was one of the few things my father left me. The elephant on the lid was a perfect match to Cochon's. The box was carved by my father. It never had a key. My first Teddy. Never had a boyfriend as loyal as him. It was my neighbor, the so-called psychic. Mamsel Collard. Oh, hello there. Don't tell me. I'm going to meet a tall, dark man. No, I don't think so. Why would you say that? Oh, just a wild guess. Anyway, your cousin's female and very pretty. What? Your cousin from Marseille. How could you forget her so soon? She was only in your apartment yesterday. Ah, oh, really? Such a charming young girl. Isn't she? And in my apartment, you say? She let herself in, of course. She's got a key. Suddenly, everything made sense. My apartment had been bugged. That was how Plantard knew all about my article. How did I know? Because the only cousin I have is a sweet little guy called Jean-Marc, who runs a patisserie in Le Touquet. These people were determined, which meant they were also very dangerous. 
I suppose she'd forgotten which apartment was mine. Oh, Miss Collard, you're a mind reader. That's just what she said. Oh, I bet it was. Well, I'd better be going. See what my sweet cousin's been getting up to. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Bonjour. Bonjour, mademoiselle. The woman who claimed to be my cousin, could you describe her again? Well, she was your height, a day lighter than yours, but otherwise she was very like you. But with impeccable manners, of course. I bet. It wouldn't be sensible to let her know about Cochon. What do you think of this carving? It's nice, but I wouldn't flash it around this neighborhood. What do you think of this shell case? I think whoever stopped that one must have a sore bottom. What do you think of my hair clip? Very nice. One day I might be able to afford one of those, mademoiselle. Take a look at this cloth. It looks expensive. Did you steal it? Uh, well, no, of course not. I don't suppose you're any good at unraveling codes. My beautiful grandmother was a cryptologist for the resistance. But all I inherited were her good looks. Do you know anything about this book ticket? No, mademoiselle. I am not a tourist office. Ever seen a safe key like this? In my business, I don't come across many. I took this stone cylinder from a safe. Interesting. Let me give you a word of advice. If you ever want to know what is written on it, you should smear it with paint and then roll it on paper. What? It's a gift, mademoiselle. I never question it. What do you make of this message? It will take you on a journey that begins where it ends. In laughter and in tears, in sadness and in joy. You got all that from this paper? No, it's from a song. I heard it on the radio this morning. Au revoir. Au revoir, mademoiselle. The smashed window hadn't been repaired yet. There was just a sheet of flimsy plastic over it. A bored-looking gendarme sat staring at the sculpture. Just your average modern art retaining wire. Please do not finger the wires. They are high-tension titanium-coated wires especially imported from Birmingham in England. This guy was either into art or wire, or both. If they were to become freed, this superb piece of kinetic engineering would topple and fall. At the same time, the force of the recoil would take your eye out. Please do not fiddle with the wires, mademoiselle. It was held in place by wires. Hmm. Maybe it wasn't that after all. Maybe it was a cell phone transmitter. Whoever had put up the statue must have been confident it wouldn't fall. It would have smashed straight into the wall of Carchon's apartment. I would be obliged if you did not touch the art, mademoiselle. I told you to not touch the art. Bonjour, monsieur. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Can I ask what you're doing? I am guarding the scene of a terrible and heinous crime. Yeah, this statue. Tell me about it. 
Au contraire, mademoiselle, this statue is a pure and visionary statement, a comment upon man's self-imposed isolation within a debased societal framework. Not a crime, then. The only crime you will find here is the murder of the great Monsieur Cachon. No. How dramatic. I know. Here in this very building, no less, it is top secret, but according to Cachon's wife, the killer was dressed as a man. Police believe there was an accomplice, a young female journalist. Even as we speak, she is being hotly pursued up and down the land. No stone is being left unturned. Good place to look for a journalist, officer. We police are no fools. Evidently. I'd be crazy to show him the paper with the code. I knew better than to show him a safe key. How would you like a nice air clip like this? I must warn you, mademoiselle, that I have been trained to resist such improper advances. What do you think of this boat ticket? Mademoiselle, if you think taking me on a boat trip down the Seine is going to get me into bed with you, then you are mistaken. I have been trained to resist women offering boat tickets, and men too. We are up to date on gender issues, you know. Ever see symbols like this? Only at the bottom of a bottle, mademoiselle. Ha! You see what I did there? I always find a little humor breaks the ice at the crime scene. Don't you agree? How was Monsieur Cachon killed? He was shot in cold blood with a gun. Why was he dressed as a man? I have my own theory. Either he was mad... Oh? Or he was a real mime, trying to throw us all off the scent by cunningly not wearing a disguise. How long have you been in the police force? All my life, mademoiselle. It shows. Thank you. Take a look at the shell case. My God! This must be from the gun that killed him! Are you sure? I think it is from an army field gun. Ah, yes, of course. The size, that's the giveaway, isn't it? What do you think of this pretty cloth? Wait a minute. What is this? I have seen this before, but where? Of course! Now I remember! At my dear grandmamas! Bless her little dressing table. Ever seen one of these? Not since I was a boy. My father taught me how to whittle using a metal cylinder like that. I bet that kept you quiet. Indeed it did. I'd never talk to him again. He died before I finished. You must be quite an aficionado of modern art. Au contraire, I adore it. In fact, I double myself. Oh, really? I used to double myself, but I managed to quit in the end. What do you think of my elephant? Hmm. A poor piece, to be honest. Derivative. Crude. Forget about it. Oh, really? I was just wondering where I should stick it. Hmm. Somewhere that doesn't get much light? That's just what I was thinking. Why would a man kill Monsieur Cachon? He was a hired killer, I expect. Everybody knows mimes don't leave prints. There was a small door set into the entrance gates, but nothing to say who lived there. The door was locked. It was a kind of ancient phone beloved of French workmen. I was surprised they still use them. I didn't need to call anyone. Thank you. 
from the stench the hole obviously led down to the sewers. There might have been clues down there, but I was relieved I didn't have a sewer key. The drain pipe had been pulled from the wall. Some idiot had clearly tried to climb it. The pipes weren't going to help my investigation. The police had been quick to clear away the wreckage and arrange for the window to be boarded up. The workman looked about as eager and helpful as your average rod digger. Hey, where do you think you're going? I wanted to see the crime scene for myself. It's too dangerous. I am under strict instructions to stop gossip mongers and vandals from getting in. But I'm a journalist. Exactly. Didn't you hear what I just said? What if I told you I was from the insurance company? I'd ask for your ID. Oh. I told you to keep out of there. Okay, okay. There was nothing I could do. The workman had everything under control. One thing I'd learned as a journalist. Find the weak spot. There was more than a hint of hairspray about this guy. And for a workman, he was pretty well turned out. Hello, could I ask you some questions? Bit late, aren't you? They already took away the body. I'm doing a follow-up on this story. Have the police finished with the crime scene? What does it look like? I got orders to board up the windows, and that's what I'm doing. So the body's been removed? I certainly hope so, or it'll stink to high heaven when they take down these boards. Shouldn't you check? Are you kidding? They don't pay me enough to put up boards, let alone check for dead bodies. Take a look at this. I don't like lessy hankies. They scratch my nose. I can see how that must be a problem for you. You see this ticket? Are you trying to bribe me? No. I don't blame you, of course. Good-looking fella like me. Would you like this air clip? What do you take me for? Some kind of a... pervert? Would you recognize this? That is the key to a safe. A warrant special, if I'm not mistaken. You're doing a fine job. Damn right I am. You should be writing about me, not that idiot that got blown up. The heroes who pick up the pieces when disaster strikes. Exactly. Well, give me your best smile and maybe I'll put your picture in the article. Oh, right. Uh, just give me a minute to do my hair. A vain man is easy to distract. So they say. The police had removed the body, but nothing else looked disturbed. It was a brandy bottle. Some journalists drink on the job, not me. A panel had been blown away, revealing a gap. From this angle, I could see that something had been lodged in the gap behind the pipes. Behind the table were some damaged pipes. Now I'd seen it in the mirror, I could make out something behind the pipes. Voila! The police and forensic teams had missed a vital piece of evidence. Some kind of pouch. On the pouch was the cross symbol of Carchon's organization. I was on the right track. There was nothing of interest beyond some bloody debris.
Hey, what about my photos? Oh, of course. How could I forget? Well, I'm waiting. Get your camera out. Camera. Oh, I forgot. It broke. Hello. They should never send a woman to do a man's job. Well, this woman had fooled him easily enough. And found the evidence the police had missed. Hello? Yes? What do you think of this pouch? Very nice. Takes me back to my posing days. Posing? At school. With a body like mine, I was never out of work. I can show you if you like. I'd rather not. I've only just eaten. Au revoir. On the pouch was the cross symbol of Cochon's organization. Inside the pouch were two items. A strange metallic artifact and a letter in some kind of code. The artifact had a sword laid across scales. There was a picture of Lady Justice on the lock panel in the room below the conciergerie. Another coded message using the same cipher system. So, Plantard was involved with Cochon. Must have followed trail from Arno and Yamada. He will come for us now. We must be vigilant. Thierry's girl broke into Pierre's safe. She worries me. Imelda. So much for Imelda's innocence. Plantard was working for her. And for Conchon. But why did Plantard want to meet? Was it a trap? Or maybe he was in too deep and needed me to tell the story. Whatever the story was. One thing was clear. It was a story worth killing for. Hello? Yes. Do you recognize this? It looks like a kid's puzzle piece. Have you ever seen anything like this? What do you think I am? A plumber? Tell me, are you related to the workman I saw digging the old? Don't talk to me about flobage. Pa! Okay. He just won a fortune on the horses and he won't give me a cent. Well, it's his money. When he was broke, he was happy to touch me for a loan. Brothers should look after each other, he used to say. He's changed his tune, now he's brassed up. Would you like to see this? No. He wouldn't be interested in a substitution cipher.
he wouldn't be interested. Look at this secret message. Very nice. But it's not secret now, is it? It's just a message. Do you like this coughing? It's the kind of thing you pick up for a couple of euros at Les Puces de saint ouen What do you think of my shell case? Are you in the scrap business? Of course not. Pity. I've got some rubbish just like that I need to get rid of. Do you know this man? He looks like a nasty piece of work. I had an uncle who was with the fascists, but we never talk about him. What happened to him? How should I know? We never talk about him. Au revoir. The strange metal artifact I found in Plantard's pouch had pointed back to the quayside. I had come back specifically to find out more. I wasn't leaving empty-handed. A secret door camouflaged in the stonework. Clever. The slab was too heavy for me to lift. door made out of stone they normally are no way would I be able to force the door open I removed the shell case Lady Justice stared out from a stone door, which was locked and reinforced with steel bands. A door like that always has something important behind it. I had to find a way to unlock it. A slot next to the safe door. All I had to do was find something to fit into it. It was like being back in kindergarten. All I needed now was a shape that would fit the slot. Plantard's key fitted the lock, so he must have used this place too. The folders were empty. Someone had removed anything that they thought could be incriminating. A photograph had been torn up. If I could just arrange the pieces...
Oh my god. It can't be. There was no doubt about it. It was a picture of my father. Papa? Oh god. After what I'd gone through, I thought I could face anything. But not this. My father. The one person in the whole world who I truly admired. Standing with Crachon, while those murderers carried on with their evil work. My father, grinning at the camera. I couldn't believe it. I realized that I desperately needed to get to the bottom of this story, and that I really needed George 